My name is Patrick Riley, Partner Marketing Manager at the Predictive Index. I had the pleasure of sitting down with Makita Brown of PVR Coaching and Consulting to get her perspective on a consultant's role in helping clients diagnose their people problems. We focused on the diagnosed aptitude of the talent optimization framework and how to help clients measure, analyze, and prescribe improvement actions. Enjoy. Hi, Makita. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today. Uh, as a strategic HR leader uh, for global companies across a multitude of industries like tech, pharma, hospitality, uh, you understand uh, focusing on the people problems that exist in organizations. And now, owning your own consultant firm, we wanted to get your perspective on what the consultant role is in helping organizations identify people problems that exist within their teams. Uh, so through our research, we've actually identified uh, three activities to help companies with this. The first is to measure what matters. Uh, the second is to analyze uh, the data that comes back. And the third is to prescribe improvement actions. So if we dive into to measuring, we know that businesses uh, monitor KPIs like revenue, spend, uh, customer retention, but unfortunately few really look at the people data. So through your work, what key people metrics do you recommend that your clients focus on? Sure, so I always like to make sure that as you look at your people metrics, they're really aligned to the strategy. So there's a lot of metrics, but you wanna narrow down to the ones that really are gonna be meaningful to the results you're trying to drive. And so some that come to mind just kind of generically, um, measuring headcount, looking at turnover, how well are you retaining your people or losing them? Um, also diversity, uh, when we think about diversity of thought, particularly for global organizations mm -hmm. and recognizing the generational difference, you at least want to have a pulse on what your organization looks like. Um, another important element is when you're looking at your org design, measuring spans and layers will give you a sense of how your hierarchy is shaping up and is it serving the decision making that you uh, perceive. And then lastly, engagement. And engagement mm -hmm. has a lot of it's things underneath <laughs> that, but definitely one that keeps a pulse to how your employees are feeling about various elements of their day-to-day, -day, how they're connecting to work, their team, and others in the organization. Now, do you actively use tools to help measure these things? If so, could you give us some examples? Sure, so I always say my favorite is Excel. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really just getting access to the data, so it doesn't have to be in a complicated format. Um, I love the pivot table format because it allows me to drill down and connect in terms of looking across um, different factors of that data or the populations that show up. Mm -hmm. The other uh, side of it though, if you want it to be a little more sophisticated, there's a lot of workforce analytics packages and actually my workforce analytics colleagues are my best friends because they really know how not only to look at the people metrics, but connecting it to some of the business factors that you might not think of to really help inform is the metric effective. So for example, um, you may look at engagement overall, but really understanding how engagement connects to your most productive organizations or departments, again, the analytical sophistication might give you a little more flavor to that. So anything that would give you a good summary, drill yeah. down, um, and then again, how, how they affect certain populations. So the flexibility of having the overview and then getting deep into the data. Yes, absolutely. So can you give us an example of a time uh, that a client's performance suffered by not having sufficient people data to either back up a key initiative or, or decisions? Sure, and I'll, I'll stay in the talent management space because that's really where I specialize, but thinking about succession planning as an example. We often think about succession plans and if all the boxes are filled, we feel like, check, we have a plan. But in some of the organizations, or particularly in the manufacturing arena, I found that at a plant level, if you're not cautious, you may have the same players showing up on every succession plan. And as far as I know, we're not cloning people yet. <laughs> and so from that standpoint, you have a risk that maybe you're not intending. So the lack of visibility that really tells you how many players are, are put against the same roles as succession candidates, you're not really seeing the potential risk in not really having as deep or an available pipeline as you need. Got it. That, that's really great insight. So we, we've covered measuring. Mm -hmm. Now companies, once they measure, they need to analyze all the data that they've collected. So oftentimes in analyzing that data, it helps you uncover larger people issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so we found that focusing on changing one thing at a time is most effective. And we came up with four factors 
uh, to help a client make that decision. And those are examining the magnitude, determining the relevance, considering the breadth and looking for repetition. Does that approach resonate with you? It does, and actually, um, when you think about turnover, if you just look at it overall, it's gonna simply give you a high or low. To really understand the magnitude is where is that turnover happening? If it's happening in your research organization who are currently making it up in the last phases to a FDA approval, you really wanna make sure you're not losing some of the subject matter expertise that is associated with that. So maybe looking at turnover by a job role or a sub-function, those are some areas that, again, give you more insight. And so that magnitude piece, or rather relevance, right. it's, again, how relevant is that turnover number to your strategy and what's behind it? Is it your researcher? Is it your sales force? Those examples. Excellent. And so, so now we've measured, we've analyzed, mm -hmm. and now it's your job as the consultant uh, that, to come in and prescribe some improvement actions uh, that a client can take to, to really rectify the issues and correct those sure. things. So can you provide some examples of improvement actions that you've implemented with a client? Sure, so if you think about um, the, the, mention I, the point I mentioned earlier on turnover, if you're losing subject matter expertise that is related to your next critical product launch, really understanding that population. And, and I would say an intervention we took is we approach engagement differently. We really took the time to revamp the incentive plan because these individuals were really engaged in driving a particular milestone that had to be done on time. Our general um, bonus plan was uh, delayed, right? You would get paid several months later versus I want to hit this opportunity. So even a, changing the recognition program yeah. was a basic intervention to say, how do we leverage that to really ensure we're incenting good delivery and um, obviously approval, hopefully. <laughs> yes. so, absolutely. I, I, amazing insights today. I really appreciate for you for taking the time. Um, for those watching, if you're interested in learning more, uh, click the link below for the consultant's guide to diagnosing people problems. Thank you and we'll see you next time.